You know what they say about cracking eggs and making omelets, right? Okay, good. I, I, this doesn't really relate to anything, but I was just, uh, checking. I now own chickens. Four of them. And they are adorable. But more than that, they lay eggs. Four chickens, four eggs every day, a dozen eggs every three days. Now, I don't know about your family's egg consumption, but even my large family doesn't eat four eggs every day. We'll occasionally go through a dozen eggs doing a certain recipe or something, but really, four eggs every day, we just spend a lot of time storing those eggs in our refrigerator, and so we needed a solution to store them. A solution that would allow us to rotate the eggs and make sure that we're using the older ones first. So, I came up with this. A modular, low-poly egg holder that can snap together and stack up and store it in your kitchen. Now, when I showed this to people online, their response was, Hey, good job! You just reinvented something that we've been doing with recycled paper for years! Now, come on! What's the deal with that, people? I, yes, I reinvented the wheel a little bit, not necessarily the wheel, but I did a reinvention of something, sure. But there's nothing wrong with doing that, especially with a new technology. I want to live in a future where we've got 3D printers in every home and a reason to use them. And we're never going to get to that point if every time somebody does something that might have already been done, our response is, eh. No, that is just being shellfish. Ugh, that one wasn't really good. Yes, I laid a stinker. I want to show you a little bit about the process of making this design, so let's jump into Blender really quickly. So the first thing I did was I modeled an egg. And what I did was I took a sphere and I used some proportional editing to stretch it up and I measured the eggs that we had to make sure that this close enough to match the dimensions of the egg. I needed to make sure that it was tall enough that the stacking on top wouldn't get in the way, and then I also needed to make sure that my shape would cradle the egg without making it fall through the bottom. Then I used a couple of array modifiers to multiply it to a 4x4 four four eggs. Then I started modeling the holder. Now I want to show you this real fast, so let's turn off all the modifiers. It starts with just a simple line defining the profile. And then I applied the screw modifier to give it its shape. And I spent a lot of time trying to make sure that it touched the egg at a couple of points but didn't let it fall down. And I actually got this wrong the first two or three iterations as I was doing this, but then eventually I got that shape just right and it worked both in the the uh, simulation and in real life. Once that was done, I used the array modifier to turn this into a 3x3 three three to cradle my 2x2 two two eggs. Now, the next trick I wanted to show you was this cube. See this cube that kind of sits in the same space? See, I don't need this stuff on the outside. And so how do we get rid of it? Well, the way that I got rid of it was I created a cube, and then I applied the Boolean intersect modifier with the carve solver. That's the old solver for the Boolean uh, program. Now, here's why I did that. Let's grab the, the original here. If we look at this in x-ray mode, you might be able to tell that it, this is just the same shape repeated over and over again, but it's actually overlapping itself. And so it's got its own geometry kind of cutting through itself. Whereas when I use the intersect modifier, all that internal geometry gets cleaned up and removed. Now, for some reason, it added a whole nother layer onto the bottom from the cube and messed it up. So I kind of had to take this shape and then apply all the modifiers and do a lot of vertex editing to it to get it to this point. And also I cleaned up 
the points around the outside that I didn't need. And then I cleaned up every other one of these points and brought them down. All vertex editing on this monster. And so if I had to make a change, I had to go back to apply that modifier and do all these hand edits. And it wasn't too bad. I got pretty good at it after the third or fourth try. So for what is ostensibly a pretty simple idea and a low poly model, there was actually kind of a lot of work that went into this. All right. Now, I printed this in Pet G from my friends from CC Tree. I'll put a link in the description so that you can get it if you want. And the reason why I printed it in Pet G was because according to the FDA, Pet G is slightly more appropriate for long-term contact with foodstuffs than even PLA is. And they would know because they are the egg authority. Oh, and uh, since we're introducing a new plastic, I have another supporter tile. So thank you very much, Thomas Kinaka, for your support. And I get to find a place for this on the supporter wall. Love that. I even printed some low poly eggs to go in here. So that's pretty cool. And another thing about this model is that you don't need to worry about infill with it because all of the points come to this nice little point. You can print the whole thing using nothing but... Uh, Shells. Uh, <laughs> that's my low poly egg holder project. I hope that you will check it out and enjoy it. What's happening here? <gasps> oh my goodness. It's the miracle of life happening right in front of us. This is this is a beautiful moment. It's a it's a it's a baby T-Rex. Oh boy. Alright, buddy. Do what you gotta do. Sweet Virginia spice! Why are they formed with teeth?